Hello again, everyone. This is Ken Kibler, Director of Client Profitability with eTruckBiz. Uh, we're about two minutes from the top of the hour, and this attendee list is uh, skyrocketing as we sit here. So uh, we will wait till just a little bit after the top of the hour to make sure everybody gets to join us here. Uh, so please sit tight, and we will get going shortly. Thank you very much, and we appreciate your attendance. All right, we've uh, reached a minute after the top of the hour. The attendee list seems to have leveled off. Uh, once again, this is Ken Kibler, Director of Client Profitability uh, with eTruckBiz. I want to thank everybody for joining us today. Uh, and this is a jam-packed session uh, where we're going to talk about uh, the uh, 5 o'clock Friday announcement that was dropped on MyGroundBiz, uh, as well as... Uh, have a, a guest speaker towards the end of the conversation, a, a successful CSP uh, who has put into uh, motion some of the topics that we've talked about and how to manage uh, his operation for maximum profitability. So without uh, further ado, I'll turn this over to Jeff Walzak. As always, if you have any questions, please put them in the Q&A or in the chat, and we will uh, get to those towards the end of the presentation. Uh, once again, jam-packed here, uh, so I would imagine there'll be uh, lots of questions to go through. So with that, Jeff, take it away. Hey, you might want to check in our uh, guest. I don't see him on the list. You might want to I can drop off for a second and see if you can help him while we go through the volume and stuff here but anyway here we go uh stand by hang on what happened here yeah something all right as we always have to Tell you that eTruck Biz is not door sponsored, approved, or otherwise affiliated with FedEx Ground. So, as we do every week, we look at the volume trends, and it's been actually pretty easy to look at the volume trends the last few weeks, last few months, actually. Uh, but actually, we're starting to develop a not so cool trend here. It looks like the pickup stops are down again. The trend is starting to uh, look a little worse. And then the packages really took a hit last week. And this would be on the vans. This isn't on your trailers and whatnot that you're picking up. But it's not cool. Some pretty severe drops in the number of packages, right? Um, and, of course, we're seeing the same thing on the delivery side. It looks like the stops are pretty flat. Um, but packages and stops, for the week at least, were down. So that's not cool. Uh, but fortunately, there have been some drops in dispatches being made. Good. This is the very now as a trend goes as far as responding to the uh, volume. Um, that's a good job. You guys are doing a really good job cutting some of these dispatches out. I mean, I think whether we're doing it on purpose or doing it because we have to the hard way, whatever it, it's happening. So that's good. And then of course results in some. Decent productivity. We're hanging in there as far as trying to see if we can get that productivity going up. That's the, by the way, and we're going to talk about this a little later. This is the only way you're going to make it through 
uh, this type of vibe situation. All right, so I'd like to know, and I don't know that we have a poll question on this. It's my bad for not making sure, but I'd sure like to know how many folks that are currently on here have seen what we're about to go through here in a second. So this was the article on uh, My Ground Biz here recently talking about evolving in a time of transformation. Interestingly enough, and without very much fanfare, this came out and it's probably the most important communication from, notice I've got FDX on there. We're going to no longer use FXG because FXG is about to become a thing of the past. Um, it's probably the most important communication for sure about Network 2.0 so far on uh, the whole thing here. So let's try to step through here. Let's go through, through some of the highlights. Now, again, you, those of you that are on here know that uh, we like to say we speak FedEx and probably we've taught many of you out there now too to speak FedEx. Um, but let's try to go through here and see what they're talking about. So the very first line in that memo says FedEx is integrating and optimizing ground and express package surface operations through Network 2.0. That's right. We knew that. This massive merging of the two distinct and complex operations is a growth strategy for FedEx, and it will create growth opportunities for many service providers. First mention of this being a growth strategy. There's another thing. If you can uh, tell me, if anybody out there can tell me that they've heard FedEx refer to Network 2.0 or One FedEx as a growth strategy yet, put it up in the chat box if you would and tell me that you've heard that before. Because that's the first time I've heard it. And I think that's the first time most of all of us have heard it. <clears throat> a growth strategy. Now, Again, got to watch how you're speaking FedEx here. It will create growth opportunities for many service providers. Does that say all there, Ken? All service providers? Nope, it says many. Many service providers. Does that mean something? I don't know. Let's go through the whole thing here. For example, the ISP agreement has been amended to address some of these changes. Well, how about that? They did mention the some amendments and some changes are going to be coming with uh, current negotiations and some things that are when you start standing up now. But in addition, agreement administration processes will continually adjust to support integration and optimization. So if you, again, uh, Oh, that's interesting. They said it in Pittsburgh about the growth strategy now for, for uh, well, anyways, the most important line in the entire communication, I think, is this one here, talking about agreement administration process. The contract and the way it is negotiated is about to change. And actually, we've seen a few examples of this as late as yesterday. Ken, Carrie, exactly. Ryan. Yes, yesterday uh, had a, a customer who is having his CSA split between two buildings, uh, and those two buildings are actually on the same street within a mile of each other. But he's going to go from one contract to two contracts, but have to be spread between two buildings, and then within three months, they're opening another building which is set to house express and ground and containers and all that which is 25 minutes away so he doesn't know uh if he'll be moved to that building or not but he's got at a minimum two negotiations to be due within the next week uh that fedex wants to implement implement by may 11. so that's pretty recent so now it's just one situation. There's probably more out there and it, it's not going to necessarily be a explosion of these things, but 
there you go. If you've watched our blog posts and listened to us for months now, you know that we've been trying to sound some sort of alarm. We don't want to be alarmist because it's not necessarily a bad thing. I guess it depends on your situation. If you look in the chat there, Ken, there's a, they're, they're saying uh, they, the folks that were in Pittsburgh heard them talk about some of these things, which is cool. Anyway, um, this is a very, again, I, did they say anything in Pittsburgh about this? Because I think this is probably the most significant thing. Maybe Ken said this morning about the, since the ISP agreement was now it's coming out. So anyways, more about this later. The contract or what it turns into is going to change a lot over the next few years. So one of the things that for sure is probably going to happen here is we're going to see lots of negotiations happen here over a short period of time. And anyways, it says read below to dive deeper into how the adjustments are being made to navigate this. Yes, transformation. You guys remember early on, they used to call a lot of these things a transition to this or that. Well, they've come out and tell, told you now it's a transformation. Most of you will recall that we talked about transformation for years. That's right. Okay. Optimizing CSAs, aligning agreements for market level transition. You can read a blog post from 318 and 48 if you want about more information here, but we told you or we tried to tell you what we think at least is going on here as far as that goes. That's probably another hour-long seminar we might or webinar we might do later again, but that's that's happening. It's coming. Surface operations will be integrated and optimized at market level, transitioning several facilities within a geographic area at one time. This approach enables a more holistic assessment of combined capacity, existing resources and volume mix in the market area and in ensures that customers will continue to receive the same outstanding service they've come to expect from FedEx, which is cool. So when you speak FedEx here, this is really what this is saying. And if you can get this here, different things are going to happen in different areas, right? Again, we talked about that, but Keep that in mind. It's not going to be the same thing everywhere for everybody. Integrating surface op shape operations within a market within a market will reduce or eliminate redundancies that currently exist within Legacy Express and Ground Station service areas. To achieve this, pickup and delivery volumes will can be be combined, reallocated to the facilities, and corresponding station service area boundaries will be with will be redrawn. So. Again, here's the thing. We just said different things are going to happen in different areas, but depending on what's going on, um, it doesn't really matter. In the end, every single one of you on this webinar and every single contracted service provider in the country will have some sort of, something will happen to you here, right? Now, I think we talked about this a while back, but... If you know if you know what you're looking at here again, this map we I think did we didn't we talk about this on a webinar before? Yeah, probably about three or four weeks ago. This wasn't drawn like this just because for the heck of it. This that the, now they're telling you that terminal service areas are going to be redrawn, and th th this is a big deal, right? So, but this is already in place, which is good. Um, Anyway, let's move on. Then within each station, contracted service areas will undergo contract, this is important, contracted service areas will undergo redefinition in order to optimize the ground and express service volume. FedEx will negotiate new terms with service providers to recognize the impacts of the optimization. They're telling you this is a way that this is another way to say there's going to be multiple. You're going to wind up going through multiple renegotiations as this whole thing happens. Right. The problem will be dealing with the complexity of the negotiations. As they will largely be for new areas or reconfigured areas. And most of you know. 
We will always recommend that you don't try to attempt your negotiation by yourself. Even if it's a meso, they give you three meso offers. Again, they're not the same. I know some people think they are. We can more than prove that they're not. Especially as all this happens now, it's going to be real important that we're, you're able to tap some data that you don't necessarily have. Some, some areas are going to be your area maybe being split in two or three or whatever that is, but some areas getting added, subtracted. <clears throat> it's real important since there's going to be so many of these negotiations that we check FedEx's work, if nothing else, for, for your negotiation and then make sure that what you're getting offered is makes sense. You know, um, I don't know how else to say that, that, that to try to keep it simple, but we'll, let us help you. We'll definitely help you. Uh, agreement term, recontracting review period and negotiations timing. So agreement length term, some cases FedEx may offer to extend a service provider's current agreement or offer a shorter term agreement to align with negotiation schedule. So that's another thing, uh, Carrie, if you're on here or Ken, have we seen that so far? I saw it yesterday. Uh, just with that one example, a guy's being offered two contracts uh, in two different stations. One is 72 weeks, and the other is 68 weeks. So why the variance? It's kind of strange. Uh, I've seen contracts as long as 77 weeks and is probably as low as 55 weeks. So the different lengths are due to future plans, I would be thinking. I would be thinking you're right. So as we just said, we're already, we're already seeing this. Yes, we so are. Longer term agreements, something that else is coming out. If you really want to read some tea leaves here, when they mention longer term agreements, something else is coming after the combination of the volume. I'm not going to say anything else about that right now, but something else is coming. One crisis at a time. Let's just get through this current thing that's going to happen here. It's going to start up. Agreement term, recontracting, review period, and negotiations timing. Recontracting, review period, and related negotiations. The recontracting review period will change from six months to roughly four months. The goal is to get into negotiations quicker. And after evaluations and then begin the new agreement promptly. Service providers can expect to hear more about this process soon. Oh, yeah. And same thing, those of you that may have been in Pittsburgh, if they told you anything about this, we'd be interested to know. That'd be good. Um, but it's very, in why would they do this? Why would they even say this? Or to facilitate more to facilitate many, they got to, they're going to be a whole bunch of negotiations here. Right. If a service provider observes any of these, if a service provider observes any of these adjustments or their effects, for example, if FedEx offers an extension of current terms that, that this does not necessarily indicate that the particular decisions have been made or that an optimization schedule has been determined for a location. The network 2.0 schedule continues to be dynamic. And there are teams uh, continuously assessing each market, considering its unique characteristics. So they're saying if something happens and some, whatever, it doesn't necessarily indicate that a particular decision has been made. But it also doesn't mean that it hasn't. Yeah. Service providers will be given several months of advance notice before Network 2.0 affects their company's service areas. FedEx station management 
BDS and many other support groups will be part of the process to provide clarity around options and resources available. What options are going to be available? Why would they say there's going to be options available? You don't have to answer. We could that guess. Leaves, yes, that leaves the door wide open, like I said there. We, in Jeff's 10 predictions, we talked about a few things there, and I think there's definitely some of those options are on the table. I think so. Uh, again, what options will be available and why would anyone need options if it's just a combination of volume? If they're just putting the volume together, hmm. There will be bumps in the road. This is a this is a complicated integration, no doubt about that. But there are great plans in place and strong support teams working on it. Again, network. 2.0 is a growth strategy, a growth strategy, Ken. And FedEx is committed to providing information, technology access, and contract terms and compensation to maximize opportunities for success. Okay, good. <clears throat> growth strategy. So closing terminals is a growth strategy. I guess so. Let's hope it is. It could very well be. And and if you look at it, remember they said at the beginning that many contractors are going to have some opportunities here. For them, yeah, it's a probably a hell of a growth strategy. So anyway, it's on enough said there. It's likely it it likely will be for those that have the opportunity. That's right. Okay, now. I think that's it for going through the memo. I noticed one of the chat was, has anyone heard about a date for the end of September 9-27-24? I haven't heard anything. Have you, Jeff? Yeah. I'll let you handle that one. <laughs> well, I don't... There's... There are different things that are going to happen. Let's put it that way. One of the things, and I don't know if this is what is being referred to there, but another round of express goes into the ground network in September. I don't know that it's the 27th, but there's uh, that and maybe a couple other things. But here's the, here's the point. Okay. The, I guess the point of this whole thing, the reason they wrote that memo is because they're finally ready now to start letting some of these things loose, right? They, they're, they're. I'm sure they had tons of legal reasons why they couldn't just. They would love to just tell everybody exactly what's going to happen, and do a whole bunch of things they need to do, but you just can't if the whole thing's not done yet. The legal entity, the whole thing happens June first. So leading up to June first, they can do a bunch of things. But um, they can't, still can't let the cat out of the bag, really. I mean, they're, you're gonna. That's why we're here trying to read what's going on, right? Because um, there's a lot of things I'm sure they would love to tell you, but they just can't. What does it say? We were, we just were told that all contracts in one building are being modified to expire on this day. Oh, there's so a yeah, lot of really talk about different contract things and i'm going to be real careful that i, I don't want to spread anything that yeah we don't I, need I, to i would say that date would be the last date in 2024 that express packages will move into a ground facility because i think the drop dead last year was late october and i think that was too late that it it hurt some service levels uh going into peak would you agree with that, that Jeff? Uh, well, you know, that could also be about the time when the first quarter of the fixed fiscal year is going to get announced. So they probably, June 1st, some things happen, and then probably another round of things happens at that time, I would guess. Yep. All right. So think up your questions. Uh, oh, 
Friday before Orlando. Good and point, too. With that, that what you want to. That date's right before Orlando. Yeah. A lot of things, right? But, yeah, a lot of things are going to happen. All right. So the bottom line about this is really, so there's all these things that could, might happen, going to happen. We'll see. A lot of things been rumored, a lot of things. We're going to see them start coming out now. So the bottom line, though, is things are about to get very complicated. Okay. I don't think there's any question about that. I don't think anybody, I think it's going to happen for everybody and, and things are just going to start getting crazy. Hang in there, folks. Um, so, but what we want to do is help CSPs out by making things easier as you go through this. Okay. What do we mean by that? Do we have a poll thing that we have to do? How do we, how do you want to do this? We do. I have the first one and I'll launch it right now. I'm about to do it. I don't do it. I did it. Oh. All right. Just for fun, if you would, if you take a second, I guess, what do they just click on or something? Click on yep. the screen. Yeah, they can just click it. You can read it if you want for anybody that's listening. Oh, how confident are you in your current ability to identify and meet financial KPIs critical to maximizing your contract returns? And there's a reason we're asking this question. We're going to show you here in a minute. <clears throat> but this would be really cool if you could just take a little poll as we get going here. Okay, do I have to... Do you, what, no, what do you see? Yeah, I can, end it. Yeah, I can end it, but people are still answering, so I'm going to leave it up for a second. Go ahead and keep talking. I'll leave it oh, up for a minute. Keep talking. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, uh, oops. Oh, yeah, oh I can't. This... The slides don't work. Oh, okay, just kidding. All right, let me go ahead and end it. We've got about 51% that have voted, so that's pretty good. Pretty good, yeah. All right, here we go. Good. Can you see those? There you go. Can you see my screen now? No? I can. Can you see the results of the poll? I can see them on one of my screens. I can't. I, I'm curious what screen everybody sees. Well, let's see if I can do this. How about that? Can you see the screen, anybody? Can? I see the financial services screen. Right. Okay. That that logo on there. Yes. All right. The whole thing was we want to help CSPs out by making it easier. So the thing to really, really well, let's go through this. You're going to have to. It'll make sense if I can get this to work. There we go. We're going to make some long planned changes to our negotiation consultation process. To include some needed financial management help. And let me show you. Let me, let's talk about this. So the first thing we're going to do is because they're about to do, they're about to just we're going to get into a negotiation situation where it's not you're just negotiating your area that you currently service, if that makes sense. So it's it's going to be a thing where, oh, I'm going to be in a negotiating part of like we already said part of the area i'm in splitting it in two splitting it in three splitting it and adding moving it it's going to be a way it's going to be way different so we're going to have to update and retool our negotiation process to help be more in line with how things are going to happen here for the next actually a couple two three years but it, it's going to happen so anyways, we're going to accommodate new optimization and realignment. Basically, your new areas that you get, that you're going to end up servicing, have characteristics that are much like other areas, right? 
Now you're not supposed to talk amongst yourselves and, and compare offers and stuff. And, and at this point, most of you know that, yeah, you do have different areas. The contracts are different. Looking at one and the other, they are different. That's why you get different offers. That's fine. But it doesn't mean that there aren't other areas out there that are very similar to what you might be stepping into. The problem that you would then have, though, is you don't know what the offers look like for those types of areas. Um, FedEx does, for sure. But guess who else does? We do, because we got tons and tons of data. So that's what I mean by accommodate new optimization and realignment. We're going to be able to check out what you're being offered and make sure it makes sense. Just put it that way. New factors for time, definite operational needs as more data becomes available. So it does cost more to do a time definite if you got to run out of route. Knock those out when they need to be knocked out. That's a consideration. And currently, there are some incentives FedEx is offering to, to deliver the time definites on time, but we got to make sure it makes sense in your particular area, if that makes sense to you. So we're going to add additional analysis to make sure that those stops are being accounted for in, in your negotiation. A new cost module to incorporate actual expenses into the process. Now, this is a big, big, big deal. Um, and we'll talk about this in a minute or so, but this is something else we're going to incorporate into the new negotiation process and prepare for probable future agreement administration processes. Don't forget that phrase. That phrase was on the front it was in the first two or three lines of the memo. That's coming. Okay. Oh, and then, of course, continue to optimize the buckets to maximize revenue based on your area's characteristics. <laughs> so the, the basically the regular part of the negotiation. Okay. It's the first thing we're going to do. Second thing we're going to do is when we go through a, a negotiation process with you. We're going to do what we call business financial management. We're going to create a budget for you, a, a, a standard budget based on your negotiated charges. Okay. This is something new. We haven't done this before. We've, we've done it on the side, kind of, sort of, somebody wants to. There's a lot of this in the, in the brokerage side of things, but is, is there another poll question that has something yeah. to do with it? Yeah, this is a good spot for that, actually. See, if, let's put another poll up there. There you go. Uh oh. That one's multiple choice, so it's got check boxes next to it for options. Uh, but we don't see this one. I don't, at least. Mm. Still no poll. Says it's been launched. Do I gotta do something? We can always edit this part out. If you go to polls at the bottom, Jeff, can you open that and can you click the one that says budgeting challenges at the bottom of your screen of Zoom? I don't see that, but I see relaunch poll. No. Oh, wait. There we, go. there we go. Something happened. Okay, there you go. There we go. Okay. Please do the poll. <laughs> oh, what challenges do you face when budgeting and managing your finances for your FedEx operations? There we go. And they're off. <laughs> We got about 31% in. I'll give it just another minute or so. All right. 
That's about 50%. I feel good about that. Okay, can you see those results? I can. Lack of automated tools to link financing data. Aha. Okay, but it's interesting. It's pretty much across the board. So I and guess I got to oh, go ahead. Yep. There's there you go. And then I've got one more for you whenever you're ready for it. Well, let's, let's do it now, I guess. Now is good. Or can we? That one. Oh, there's another one. Yep. There you go. Would you prefer a budgeting tool that integrates directly with your business banking account to help you manage your specific key performance in uh, indicators in real time? Thank you to everybody that's doing this, by the way. Yes, thank you. Cool. All right, that's about 50, almost 60%. So I'll end that one. There you go. Okay, let's see. Let's, I'm gonna try to, if I did this right or wrong last time. Can you see my screen there, Ken? This? I still see. It says number two. Yes, number two. Yeah. All right. Okay. So, what did I just say? So, finally, the financial guide sorely needed by CSPs to navigate the choppy business environment. So, that's really the, a lot of folks, quite honestly, everybody out there is struggling right now, financially, for sure. I don't care how, I mean, we've had some folks that are doing well, and we're going to hear from one here in a little bit. Um, but one of the things is, is cause we don't, there's no, somebody put it bumpers on the bowling alley. We need something to keep us going down the straight and narrow, right? So hopefully we're going to fix that here. Uses current and historical data others don't have and can't get. So to figure out this budget or when we figure out a budget for your particular situation or for your CSA or CSAs, because each one of them is going to have their own set of budgeted numbers, you got to have the data to do this. I mean, it took us a how this long to even come up with a way to do this. And you can't just get this data. It's not, you can't just say, well, I've worked with a hundred contractors. Well, that doesn't matter. You got to have a whole bunch of data to do this. Our most stress successful clients finding find budgeting essential for financial success. We're going to let one of the Mr. Speed here in a minute uh, tell us how he does this and how how he's successful. So you got your you do your negotiation. We go through the whole negotiation process. Yes, we want to maximize that. Yes, we want to make sure that it makes sense for the particular area you're going to do. From there, you can develop a budget. That's good. Now, the next thing we wanna do is engineer and provide key financial goals for CSPs from that budget information. So from what we spend and what we make in revenue, we wanna come up with some goals and some ways to do this. So if you look at the bottom down there, it'll say stop per dispatch goal 132. Financial and operational key indicators and goals developed for the individual CSA, right? How many stops do you gotta average on your trucks every day? Now, just ask yourself that right now. Do you know that? Well, maybe you think you know, maybe you don't know at all, but that that's the reason we got some financial problems out there because most folks don't know and they let it rip and we're going to show you an example here of something in a second. Um, these goals provide key or provides key goals for your biz, not FedEx. So FedEx, they have a goal for you every day. What is it? 99.0. 
So everybody knows that, right? Good. That's good. They want their goal achieved. Well, you got to make money. So let's not, let's put a goal in front of you so we make sure we can make some money, right? <clears throat> Reduces negotiation and budget to easily understandable numbers that can effectively be communicated to the team. So that was what we were talking about, but trying to make things simple and easy. There's all these things that are going to happen. Service levels, everything, this whole thing's going to get complicated. Uh, dispatchers versus BCs. Um, pick the same day on call pickups. A bazillion things are going to happen, but let's keep everything down to one thing. They're going to they're going to ask you for service for sure. And if I'm a contractor, I want one number. Tell me what I got to do. How many stops I got to put on a truck every day? If I put that many stops on the truck, I can pay my bills. That's good, right? Anyways, minimum stops per dispatch, and we'll hear Mr. Speed here shortly. <clears throat> and pertaining to our last poll question, it's going to be something new about to be unleashed, and we're going to call it cash flow tracking for now. If you look at this, um, I don't want to get too crazy into it right now because it's really not totally ready yet, but it's getting very close. Um, we're going to have a real-time application that allows for actual income expenses and cash flow to be at your fingertips. How many of you know that right now? Allows for constant monitoring of budget and goals. So we we did our negotiation. We got a budget. We've got our goals. So how, what are we actually doing? We're what am I actually spending money on, and how is it affecting my profitability or not profitability? That's one of the problems. That's one of the reasons why we let things happen. What th that they do is because we don't see the results of it. What well, you're about to, you're about to be able to see the results of what happens basically in real time. Reinforces, like I just said, adherence to goals and your budget. Uh, and then you can take this data and send it to your accounting software if you want or to our CPA and you, we can do accounting as a service. So this is the, the part, the piece that completes the circle here. This is real cool. And, and like I said, much more to come on this. This is actually very exciting. And we weren't necessarily ready to show this to anybody yet. But thanks to our friends at FedEx, we thought we needed to. So why is negotiation you, we i think everybody would understand that their negotiation is important for sure um then creating a budget and then creating goals that aren't necessarily operational goals because most of you that are on here have heard us talk about operational goals forever and ever that's fine but how about some goals that that apply to my money to my finances right and then of course a way to track all that why is that important so that we're going to we're going to show you here in a second doesn't happen okay so <clears throat> here we have a picture this came from uh my favorite thing facebook and it says what does it say here it says happy wednesday y'all anyone done with deliveries for the day and waiting for my last two pickups how's everyone else doing pretty cool huh So what do we see here? That it's Wednesday. Okay. It's not raining. Cool. Good job. It's 124 in the afternoon. Is there anything wrong with that, Ken? Uh, <laughs> I I would hope my driver had about uh at least three more hours worth of work, if not four more hours worth of work. Well, we got enough time to take a stop and park the truck, have a smoke break, take a picture of my <clears throat> handy dandy um, best app to use for PD contracting in the world and take a picture of it. So as Ken just said, we're she's she's done for the day. Oh, nope, she's got two pickups waiting on, but she's done. 124 in the afternoon. 
She's been on the road, according to this, for four hours and 21 minutes. Now, at four hours and 21 minutes, is it dark out yet? Nope. Are her stores and stuff closed? Nope. Traffic bad right there? Nope. Uh, she, it says she's doing 24.65 stops. It says stops per hour today. You do a little math there, Ken? Uh, yeah, I, my math would go 86 divided by 4.35. Because 20 minutes is 0.33. And I come up with 19.8 or 20 stops per hour. So I'm not sure where 24.65 stops per hour would come from. So, but I I didn't invent math. Somebody else did. Looks like they invented their own math. Yeah. Wish we had a poll question. Tell me, and maybe you guys put it in the chat and stuff. What, is this a new kind of math or something here? We want to... Make it, I don't know, what, what? Okay, 24 stops an hour. Glad I'm paying extra than I have to for this thing here. Anyways, here she did a good job. Completed her checklist and stuff on there. Okay, fantastic, right? So here's the deal. So that's a good day, right? She looks like uh, we're at 99% service probably on her, do you think? Ken? Is that a good day? Yeah. That, if that's all you're measuring a service, it's a success. Financially, though, service doesn't pay the bills. So it's a really good day, right? Uh, no. This is exactly why some contractors are calling us with all kinds of issues right now. That is exactly what's going on. Now, you can disagree with me all you want, but just take a look at what's happening on those trucks. That's the first thing we're going to tell you, right? And you don't need to hear me talk about this. Let's hear from a very successful CSP and his secret to success. Now, how do I get Mr. Speed in? Is he unmuted? I'm going to see if what I can do here. Hang on. Let's see, I don't. John, are you able to hear us? his name in the attendee unless he's over here so. he should be on uh host or panelist stand by standing by Oh, man, this would have been great if you would have been there. Hang on. That says he's here. I can't find him on the attendee list. Is that better? There you go, Mr. Speed. All right, all right. How you guys doing? We're going to be fantastic. Good, good. All right, uh, looks like I probably don't have a lot of time left, but- You have plenty of time. I'm gonna tell you guys how I run my business. Uh, I, my name's John Speed, I'm in Little Rock, Arkansas. I run, I've been in business since uh, 2017. Um, routes go up and down, they vary. Uh, today I'm running 19 routes. Uh, yesterday I believe I ran 21. So they do go up and down. Uh, the way I, 
try to run my business for profitability, um, is I, I use a lot of the tools that uh, eTruck has given me over the years. And um, they, they taught me how to run my business by averages. Okay. So I found a number that I felt like I needed to dispatch uh, every day. And we try to ebb and flow to that, that average uh, so that we operate a, a, a profitable entity. So my, my trucks run about 215 miles a day. Uh, and so the number for me is around a hundred stops. If, as long as I can average a hundred for a week, you know, for the full week of six days, I'm, I'm going to make money and, it, and it's going to go up and down yesterday. I think it was 115 stops per, per guy. Um, and we run some country and, and when we have a lot of uh, time that we spend running down the road, um, uh, that, that number, you know, generally that's going to, you know, uh, on average right now, my, my routes will uh, run uh, around $195,000 a year if I stay on, on track this year. Uh, that's, that's pretty damn good. As the gas me truck will tell you that's, that's making, that's making some hay. And John, uh, so you said each route generates a hundred five thousand dollars on average correct uh, annually yeah that's that's what i'm track that's what i'm track on track for this year and and i and i can look at that and get that information very simply from using e-trucks tools you know you look at the opt matrix or uh, you know that gives you how much how much um, revenue you produced and you can get the whole average for the year and if you look at my average it's up you know i'm, I'm somewhere around 600 and Twenty-five, six hundred thirty-five dollars uh, per day per round. So uh, yesterday I had an exceptional day. It was uh, six hundred and fifty-eight dollars. Uh, I wake up every morning and uh, look at my favorite thing, and that's my EOD uh, end of day. So I can see my revenue in the morning when I get up and have coffee. So I'm all dialed in on on uh, e trucks uh, tools and. Um, I think uh, some of the new opportunities they're going to have will be really good, good for uh, uh, a lot of uh, ISPs um, out there to help them manage their business uh, more efficiently. Because that's FedEx does not pay us to go out and run around and drive their trucks and, and look cool uh, sporting the brand. Uh, they pay us. The only way we're going to make money is if we mine it. So uh, if we get out there and figure out the right number, uh, we can make a good margin in this business. And uh, Do you have any yesterday's service, ask another question? That? So you ran 115 stops per driver day and 200 miles per driver day yesterday. Did you have any trucks back in the building at two o'clock in the afternoon? No, sir. They all pretty much average eight hours, working an eight hour day. Okay. Thanks. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. But uh, the only way you question know, for you, Mr. Speed. The only way we're going to make make money is, is in this business is to go out and mine it. It's there. You just have to go out there and be vigilant and be stern with your drivers and set high expectations. And um, if you do that, they they, they respond better to having uh, more structure than than less. If you the structure goes away, they they will try to run you over. So. Keep, keep a good structure around them, write them up, discipline them, and they respond to it well. So, Mr. Speed, any you other hear questions? Me? I've got a question for you if you can yes. hear me. So, you look every day, you, you've got it, you have what I'm going to call a goal, right? It, you have a goal, you, you said, you need to keep at least a hundred stops on each truck. Average a hundred stop, a hundred stops per dispatch. Is that right? Yes. Sir. Is that easy enough to convey to all your folks and your BCs and everybody, and just say, "Look, I got to have this much on the trucks." That's just what it is. Uh, yes, that's 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 what we do. They they know and. They're you no, know, they're like I said, Jeff. There are some routes that you can't put a hundred stops on, but 
the ones that you can, you just up the average. So if you, if I'm running in Russellville, Arkansas, nine routes, I mean, I'm going to have two of them loaded up pretty good. I think one of them yesterday had 220 stops on it. The other one had 135 or 40. So that helped my averages a lot with the other uh, seven trucks out there running around that maybe couldn't. couldn't so it's that, it. it's that average. It's that. It's you, all that's about what the average. Right. Yeah. So. Okay. We just. And your call just, still will help someone. That helps me keep up with my averages. So. Um, and how long does it take you to find that average every? I mean, how do you do you take does it take you an hour to calculate all that to figure out what it is? What on DRO? Oh no. How do you do it? All I, all I have to look all I gotta do is wake up and look at my EOD or look at look at my um uh, boss. Well, boss app. Your optics app? Yeah, my optics app, yeah. So right. So so you don't it doesn't take you a lot of work to see what's going on at seven, eight, whatever Not o'clock in the morning, right? That that's how the point here is that's how you're takes right. That's how you're able to st stay profitable, even in these tough times. Right? Yes, sir. John, yesterday okay. was Monday and you dispatched 21 routes at 115 stops per driver day. Tuesday, you're down to 19 routes, so you have less stops today, correct? Correct. And did you know you were going to have less stops because of historical data, or did you just rely on DRO to know that you were going to have less stops? A uh, combination of both. And um, today, we didn't we didn't make it to 100. We made it to 98.95. So... Uh, we uh, we probably miscalculated a little bit. It showed probably a lot more than it than it, than it than it was supposed to last night on DRO in um, the location. So um, we missed it, but my average is still intact because of yesterday, right? You had money in the That's... bank, right? So 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 you you had money in the bank from yesterday, so you took a little withdrawal today. Well, pr probably did. Like with house money, a little bit. Yeah. So you had about 1,881 stops, 1,900 stops today? Yes, sir. But I'd, I'd, I'd be interested to know if anybody else on here knows exactly how many stops they get on the road and exactly how many, what the average dispatch was, the average stops per dispatch. Maybe you do. Maybe you do. If you know... And you know what your let's call it a break-even point is. In this case, Mr. Speed says his is a hundred. That's what you got to know to get get by these days. If you guys have any questions for Mr. Speed, put them in the uh, Q and A box, please. While he's on here, still got a couple minutes. <clears throat> you want me to go to the questions, Jeff? Yeah, why don't you do that while we're First one was John John Welsh had seen the uh, memo, great, and deciphered it. It was not one of those memos that you read one once and decipher it. Hopefully, uh, John Burnett helped. Uh, but if you haven't read it, please go back and read it. Uh, make sure it's you do. It's already on page two, so FedEx has moved to page two news uh, already. So. Another question, I think the results of the survey are typical. Most contractors are not honest. They don't know their numbers, but won't admit their but you, you know, and that that that's true. Uh, knowing your numbers is absolutely critical. Being able to take change to make changes to uh, change your numbers is also critical. But as I said, you got to know you have a problem, and John. Knew he had a problem, wasn't making the money that he wanted to make. Uh, and, John, and I've talked a couple times a, uh, every week. And, he, he, you know, he, he figured out what his costs per dispatch were. And uh, we, we worked through some some math. 
I always tell John I didn't invent math, but I can do the numbers. And he came up with, you, you know, what he needed because he knows his cost, he knows his revenue per stop, and then he knows how many stops per dispatch he needs. So, uh, if you don't know how many stops you have on the road and what your stops per dispatch are, don't be ashamed. Take action to find out. In the new eTruck Biz Boss system or in the Optics app, <coughs> those numbers are available to you from the preload through the dispatch and on road all day long. So you have that data available. You can't wait till the end of the week because guess what? If you wait till Friday to make a change, uh, you've missed whole weeks of opportunity because you haven't done anything to change your settlement check that's going to hit the bank next Friday. Anything to add to that, Jeff? Okay. Uh, we'll go, I am I correct that if changes to our CSA occur, they would there would be new negotiations. Do not know if meaningful our current negotiation is for two-year agreement. Two-year agreements, they might say two years, they might not be two years. Count the number of weeks. Uh, said anything that is 53 weeks and above is considered a two-week or a, a two-year contract. But yes, if there is a change that is, is it carried more than 10% in volume, they would do the negotiation? Yes, or any type of um, change in the CSA definition triggers a renegotiation. Are you which, open on this? Yes. Which is gonna, wait, that, I think if they have a, if you have a, let's say a, a contract for whatever, 55 weeks, but they're going to reconfigure the areas, that's going to trigger renegotiation. That, that, that's what they're trying to tell you in that memo. They're going to, okay, that's great. You got a contract forever long, but we're changing it. So just keep that in mind. Right. I think these were both for John. Are you open on Sundays? Um, no. You, yep. So you went back to six days last week, John? Or last year? Uh, yeah, last year. Okay. Last year. And, uh, yeah, Sundays, uh, uh, once again, it can hurt your productivity, but it can also help your productivity. Uh, Sundays spread you out a little bit, but once again, just like Saturdays, you do not have any, uh, any pickups to wait for. So you might be some more driving, but you could still, and, and you, as John says, as long as his weekly average is 100 stops per, per driver day. So now if John can average 115 on Mondays and he can do 100 the rest of the week, guess what? Sunday, he doesn't have as many dispatches. He might, he, he might be able to get away with 90 stops per dispatch on a Sunday. You don't want to do that, but you can have different stops per dispatch goals. Quite frankly, Saturday should be your highest uh, stops per dispatch goal that you have. I hope that makes sense to everybody. Uh, what are, Mr. Speed, what aver What are your average wages or daily rate or hour hourly rate, John? Um, my percentage of revenue is 45 percent so you're so so your your labor as a percent of revenue is running right at 45 percent correct which is where you guys told me i need to have it yes absolutely that that is the key budget item uh and that your your rate plays into your stops per dispatch goal because that that's part of the expenses so it, you know and it, you know if you've fiddle, fooled around with some of our calculators or use the golden rule that we have you, you could work work from there as well that is available on, on our website uh so if, if 
that that's the quick easy way to do it uh may not be uh, exactly what you want to be but your hourly rate will definitely determine the revenue per stop you need and of course the revenue per stop you need is determined will determine the stop driver day that you need okay so next one what is the average per stop dispatch the terminal is saying you need compared to your number yeah so what are they budgeting you on stops per dispatch john 80. so so john john wants 650 uh dollars per dispatch or, or in that range and and that's a hundred so if, if tells me his wages are in the six are his revenue per stop is in the six dollar range so six times 80 is what fedex is telling them fedex seems to think that 480 per dispatch is enough and do you have a conversation with the with the negotiator not I, I have not had that, that conversation with him, but I'm I, I tell you, it's not enough. 80 stops is not enough to make a, a living in Russellville, Arkansas. Um, yeah. in, in, in today's world. Yeah, I mean, just the other expenses uh, w w would eat you alive, especially at 200 miles per dispatch. Yes. So, but yeah, and that that's one thing. Uh, if you go through us, we'll have you talk to the negotiator and they'll tell you how many dispatches you are budgeted per week. And, and as uh, we we will put forth that budget for you as well. And but your numbers, you you want to exceed what they think it costs to to run the business. As John said, he would not make money at four hundred and eighty dollars per dispatch, especially at two hundred miles. You're running 50 miles in downtown Tampa. Yeah, 480 might get you there. But John, knowing his expenses, your cost per dispatch, my guess his cost per dispatch is more than $480. Yeah. You know, you guys are talking about these length of contracts. Heck, man, I, I wouldn't want one more than a year after the uh, inflation we just went through. And you can always request a renegotiation. You have to have term it unique business operating conditions. Uh, you, and you get, you're going to have to know your number. You're going to have to know what your costs have done through that year. You're going to have to know what your stops have done uh, because uh, we have a customer that I, I looked at his uh, just yesterday that he, he took on a new CSA and He's running eighty percent of the stops that they projected him to do. Guess what? It's time for him to request a renegotiation. He, even though his revenue per stop has increased, so it's not going to make up eighty percent. But you, you, you know, you still have to figure out if this is my cost and this is my revenue. I still have to know how many stops per dispatch to do. Okay. Uh, so he says, they, "Go ahead." Hey, what? What? What are are you guys going to come out with a tool that tells me with this new stuff we've been talking about today, are y'all going to be able to tell me what my cost per dispatch is? Yes, sir. Your real cost, not something you guessed at, but what you're spending money on. Yes. That's exactly right. That's the point. That's one of the points of everything we're doing here. Well, that, that would be an awesome tool for everybody I know, probably on this call. Um, especially because I'm sure it just, it goes up and down uh, on a weekly basis. Right. You can have a budget, but the the point, the question is, what? okay, that's great, but what am I really spending? Now, you can find that out if you have a monthly some way of monthly talking to your accountant, maybe, or you get a PL somehow, or you got QuickBooks. People say, well, I got QuickBooks. All right, well, how many people on here tell me, tell me how many folks have your QuickBooks up to date? And do you like doing it? Or do you pay somebody to do it? Whatever you do, most people don't. But, and that's what 
what we're doing with this new application that we're putting together is you, you're basically not going to have to do anything. And you'll be able to look on your phone and see where you're at. Cash flow wise, expense wise, all kinds of different things. So it's actually a very big deal. It'll it'll change a lot of people the game for a lot of folks. And yeah, getting that cost per dispatch in there is well, you know definitely one of our goals. Uh, it, you know, it's going to depend on CSPs getting their data in there as well, their expense data in there, or if we can automate it as as we hope to do with that uh, that app that uh, Jeff showed here. That then it even gets easier. So it, then it's automated. That that is automated. That is you don't do anything. That will be you don't do anything. That That's expense data thing. goes to your phone. So it sounds like a lot of people are doing pickups on Saturday and Sunday. I don't. Hopefully they're not as many as that are scheduled uh, for between the four, five, and six o'clock. That seem to happen. Uh, if you have a lot of those, is that a time where you use a part-time driver to cover some pickups? It might be. Uh, to rather rather than uh, using a full-time driver out there sitting and waiting, am I better off? utilizing a part-time driver it depends on the, your you know your stem miles to your area uh bulk routes yeah they count in there that's part of your average uh so yes we know that a bulk route is going to might might average 30 40 50 stops who knows uh but as john said he's he's got routes uh that average 215 miles. that means he's got routes that do 150 he's got routes that might be 300 miles and those 300 miles, chances are that person's only going to do 50 stops. But overall, that business has still got to average for John that number of stops per dispatch. FedEx thinks it was 80, but John says it's 100 for him to operate profitably. So, yeah, the bulk routes do go into your average. If you got it, 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 the other thing that a lot of people miss in their average are the dreaded cleanup routes. Cleanup routes cost you on your stops per dispatch, your revenue per dispatch, your metals ranking. So all of that goes in because every dispatch you have the threat of an accident, complaint, uh, and is it generating enough revenue for it itself? Might not be, but if it doesn't support itself, does it give somebody else or three or four other routes, the ability to do more stops that will help make up the cost of covering that cleanup route. I hate the word cleanup route, in case you can. Uh, hey, hey, Ken. Yes. I've done cleanup routes. I've had them. And I will tell you right now, the only reason you have cleanup routes is because you have bad planning on DRO at night. That's it. That's coming straight from, from a CSP there. Or you, have, or you have drivers that don't want to take bulk in. It's right down the middle because they don't want that. They don't want to have to fight that package that's in the middle of their aisle way, right? Well, we get some of that too, but, you know, those guys, you know, in my organization aren't going to be there long. Yep. So, hey, hey, John. Hey, yeah. it's Bob. Are hey, you Bob. guys by chance use, using the dynamic anchors? um in dro yeah. yeah we use dynamic anchors ridge dro mm -hmm. we do yes great good deal that should help eliminate you know maybe not totally eliminate but cut it down quite a bit as far as having those cleanup routes then yeah because uh, no, we, we just don't we just don't we, we've eliminated them they're they're not a part of the conversation any longer so, i'd like to give excellent. you a hug if I could give you a hug, John, I would. So instead, yeah. I'll buy you a scotch. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. My but, son's my son's routes. He's running 129 stops a day now, and uh, we got no cleanup routes. Everything's clean. Everything goes out. We've eliminated three routes off his off his uh, routes this year. So he's had great success as well. Hey, Bob, does the dynamic DRO take into account cubic? Uh, the, the cubic square footage? Yes. Yeah, it does. Oh, right there, it's going to eliminate sure those cleanup routes. 
Yeah, and just make sure you've got the correct, you know, as we take old trucks out and put new ones in, make sure we update that. Yeah, make update sure yeah, you DRO update. with that information. Yeah, because you, if you're running a, a P1200, you used to run a 700, it's not going to accurately spread out the cubic square footage uh, on the routes for you. So this is John running express volume. John, you run express volume in Humboldt, Tennessee, correct? Yes, we did. Right next to you there, Andrew. Bumps almost up against your service area, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, if your stops per dispatch is greater than the terminal goal, can this negatively affect your negotiation? John, did they take money away from you when you were beating their goals last time? Uh, no, they did not. Okay. Uh, the uh, the rates the rates, as you well know, because you've helped me with all my negotiations, or your company has, have, have basically stayed the same for the past, uh, gosh, three three maybe four years. Now a lot of people complain about that because they say that inflation has driven costs up. But to combat that, what have you done, John? You've gotten more efficient, correct? We've gotten more efficient, yes. Simply more efficient. Where FedEx seems to take money away or, or penalize contractors is when they see 5.5 hours on road, 6.2 hours on road. That's where we'll see some punishment. Even even if the, the, the CSP says, well, I'm doing 25 stops per hour. That's great, but your trucks are only on the road five hours. So... So that, that's where we'll notice contractors will take a hit during a negotiation. Uh, what will be the cost of the new tools? Uh, the, the wonderful thing about it is with Express Pro 395 per CSA with unlimited trucks or employees covers everything except we don't have that, that new banking tool in there yet. Uh, I don't know what the cost will be for that yet because it's still in the finalization stages. But all of those revenue tools, uh, optics app, end of day, the uh, op metrics, that's all included in, in that cost. You can track your revenue right now in real time with the optics app. You can track it at the end of the day, any period of time. John Speed knows his revenue per route by using the op metrics, correct, John? And you run it for six month period of time, three month period of time. Yes. So that comes at that three ninety five price tag. If you have an extra CSA, we're going to hit you an extra hundred bucks. So, and once again, hey. in that CSA, unlimited number of trucks. So. So tremendous advantage with the Express Pro package uh, gives you access to the tools that you need every day to manage that revenue. John, it could, if you didn't ask or, or track your stops per dispatch every day if, and you did that for a week, do you think you'd get the exact same results that you're getting right now? Uh, it would be uh, probably about like if I didn't um... – manage my business actively with drivers or anything else it would it would slowly slip away yes with without a doubt the kind of the story i i tell is when i took over the miami facility it wasn't a bad running facility but i had to go in and fight every day and if i didn't go in and fight every day i ended up taking two steps back the next day so uh, hey, hey, Ken. Yes. I have a question. Um, I'm sure it's on a lot of people's minds. I know it's on mine. If let's just say I, we enter in and I end up with, I don't know, umpteen negotiations. Um, you know, going into you know, all this stuff, and is there going to be any sort of consideration by e truck on? multiple negotiations um that i know. will let i i will not uh 
overstep my pay grade, and I'll let Jeff and Kerry get to that. I'm sure you all thought about it. And I, I'm just kind of thought about it when we were talking through this that, the earlier meeting. So. so you're not supposed to answer or ask tough questions. <laughs> yeah. Only Especially we can ask them of you. <laughs> Well, we I'm need sorry. to see how this is going to go. Actually, we have talked about this a little bit. Um, it, what we're finding, or what we would, this isn't, this isn't totally um, foreign. Let's put it that way. But there's used to, we used to do spinoffs. The, th the issue, though, is the amount of work to do these negotiations. It doesn't get easier. I mean, it actually makes it tougher because these aren't regular negotiations anymore. Yeah. So we'll just have to see as we go through a few of them. To, as as things start happening here, we'll have a better handle on that. Well, you know, we don't try to gouge you guys. You, if you want to get gouged, go buy Ground Cloud and let them charge you for extra routes you don't use. That's what Ken didn't tell you. You get unlimited e route with e truck too. He was gonna tell you, but he didn't tell you yet. So the value is tremendous. We try to make everything as is uh cost effective as possible and if you look at it this way cost of the negotiation i mean some of those other clowns out there trying to do negotiations we're killing you for that stuff we've kept the price the same for the last i don't know how many years it's been 10 years um but if you do well on your negotiation which most folks do the return on that investment is way out there so it's it's a good it's it's worth it. Let's just put it that way, right? You know that. I I do, and I I will say to the other folks, I've I've uh, been with uh, E Truck for be eight years, or probably no, it hadn't been eight years. It's probably been because I I searched for you guys when I first got in the business because I was tired of writing checks, and um, once I found you, I quit writing checks. So, well, whatever money I spend on E Truck has always been insignificant to the amount of money that I've made with, with them. So now you get a free negotiation because you, you get a pay <laughs> for I'm out of the doghouse, huh? <laughs> One last question for you, John. John, how far to and from your route to the terminal? Seems like FedEx punishes CSPs who are closer to their terminal. We are basically forced to do a lot more stops per dispatch to make profit, which is near impossible due to the amount of bulk and cubic feet. So how far is it for me to go? Go. Uh, yeah, what are your stem miles? Oh, uh, 80 miles. Yeah, so, and, and what I always say is anybody can drive a truck 55 miles per hour. Not everybody can deliver 155 stops when they have to deliver 155 stops. And so, in routes, yes, you have to do more stops. Uh, no, no doubt about it, because you have less costs. They're going to pay you less. Uh, there, there, there's no doubt about it. So uh, one of the things to revisit, and Jeff and I talked okay. about this on Saturday, is do your managers know the proper methods? Do your managers train the proper delivery methods? We've, sh we've shown a video on here. We've shown it in class where a comparison between the UPS guy and the FedEx guy basically making the same delivery. UPS guy gone at 45 seconds. I believe the FedEx guy was there six minutes and 10 seconds. So, you know, cube, cube is always a challenge. No doubt about it. Uh, but if you're very close to the terminal, double tripping routes is not impossible at all. Uh, talked to the Youngstown uh, senior manager. He, he actually went out to the UPS uh, driver and what did he find out? Oh, the UPS driver delivers one truck. And then what happens? A manager drives him another, drives the empty truck back to the building. So uh it, it it is possible you know if you don't want the drivers to come back to the building can you shuttle packages up to them might be more you know 
and ask yourself what's more effective. But they, yes, if you are close to a station, they're going to make you do more stops. But then again, do your drivers have the proper methods to deliver 150 stops? Because I guess anybody can drive a truck 55 miles per hour. I'm fat and old. I can drive 55 miles per hour, but I'm not sure I can deliver 155 stops. Okay. Looks like we might have one more question. Yeah, okay. Uh, it looks like we got all of them. We took a full hour today. Uh, no, it took like an hour and 25 minutes today. Uh, hopefully everybody found this uh, useful. Uh, said if you haven't read uh, the release that's on my Columbus, please do. If you have questions about the data we provide you, please call me. Uh, that data is, is there tracking stuff daily is absolutely critical to your success. Uh, FedEx is not going to fix your profitability. Only you can fix your profitability. And it starts, as uh, Dave Parrish said, admitting that you're not running blind. I got a problem. Okay, now what am I going to do to my pro for my problem? And then you can come up with a goal and then making tough choices to change behaviors and change results or change faces. So with that, thanks everybody for your time. Uh, we will be back here uh, next uh, Tuesday. We may not promise a guest speaker, but uh, if we have one, uh, we'll give them a free negotiation, just like we did John. John's coming back. He wants to talk more. <laughs> so everybody, please have a safe, profitable week and take care. Bye-bye.